first of all, y'all, we are sitting in Jane Adams' bedroom in the whole house. Adams' is Adams' apostrophe. This is crazy. Yeah. This is crazy. Like, also, Rebecca's tiny. Yeah, yeah. She was tiny. She was tiny. Here's her garments right here. You can't see it, but like, be roll. Like, there, <laughs> there, there yeah. it is. Um, but also, we are here with like the historian of the whole house. Go ahead. Nadia, what's your official title? So my official title is education manager. There it is. There it is. Nadia Moraga, and I've been here at Whole House for about three and a half years now. Did you, when you first came here, did you have this reaction that I had? Oh yeah, I knew it as a student because I was a student here at, um, at UIC, and then I came here for classes and things like that, and I just kept coming back because I liked the space so much. Yeah. But totally nerded out. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. This is like, we. I'm going to say it on the camera. Up to this point, y'all, this is the coolest place we've had the podcast mm -hmm. like, by far. Like, this is the coolest place. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us about, the, I mean, we know the history about the whole house. We we know, you know, kind of like who Jane Adams was, but like, tell us from, you know, an account of being in here and having these artifacts and what's in here. Sure. So Jane Adams was a reformer. Um, she is often called the mother of social, like modern social work. Um, because the work that was done here at the Whole House Settlement created a lot of the foundations that then went into creating the field of social work as it is today. Mm -hmm. um, she came from Northern Illinois. Um, she was from a very small town. And she just was really dedicated to the idea, like over the course of her life, that she wanted to be involved in work that would better people's lives somehow. Right. Um, and that was during the, it was like right before the progressive era. So this was a time, you know, where a lot of people who are from wealthy families were, you know, expressing this want to be involved in charity work and philanthropy and things like that. She wanted it to not be something that was so. Um, Savior complex. Yes, yeah, yeah. exactly. It's just like today. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, and you know, of course, there was still a bit of that paternalism. You can't get away from that with just the nature of the institution itself. But they did a pretty good job of bringing the institution to the people who lived in the community mm -hmm. and making it more of a community effort to yeah. build the programs and keep them going versus here, we're going to come to your neighborhood and we're going to dictate what we're going to do. Right, right. Um, and so that was really a lot of her philosophy. Um, she said, you want to uh, work with the people, not for the people. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. um, so, revolutionary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Way back in 89, or way, you know, 1889. <laughs> um, and so the Whole House Settlement was founded in 1889. Uh, she actually founded it with her friend Ellen Gates Starr and um, Mary Kaiser. So Mary Kaiser was from Cedarville as well. Ellen Gates Starr came from a different uh, small town in Northern Illinois, and they knew each other from college. Okay. They were part of the first generation of American women who actually attended university and college. And, oh, wow. Yeah, and started getting degrees. Uh, a fun thing is when jo Jane Adams actually graduated, she went to Rockford Female Seminary at the time, which is Rockford University today, and she um, did not receive a diploma right off the bat because they weren't giving women diplomas yet. Oh, that's and great. she actually had to go back very bravely to get her diploma. So she had to go back and go to class. Yes. Just to, even though she's sitting there like, uh, I just finished. I just finished. Right. That's, I that's, that's wild. Yeah. That's wild. So they uh, knew each other from school and they remained friends after that. Um, and then moved to Chicago because it was the major urban center. Um, and they chose this particular neighborhood to settle in because uh, it was basically the largest immigrant and most impoverished community in the city. And they kind of wanted to go and target the problems at their source yeah. um, and kind of like at the ground level. And so this wasn't too far from the garment district. Yeah. Um, and that's where most of the people who lived in this community worked. Um, in the clothing factories. They were mainly, um, in 1889, it was mostly Italian, um, Russian Jewish, and Bohemian immigrants, some Irish immigrants in the neighborhood, and some German neighborhood uh, neighbors as well. Uh, and they were working in really, and living in really dire conditions. The conditions of the neighborhood in terms of sanitation was 
abysmal. Right. Um, there was a lot of corruption in the local government that was proliferating this. Yeah. Surprise, uh, surprise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they, uh, that was like a big campaign on Call House's part. They really got involved in a lot of public health, um, women's health, reproductive health. Um, it was the site, Whole House was the site of the second birth control clinic that opened in Chicago. Wow. Um, yeah, they were so revolutionary. Yeah. And like people who worked here were working in, you know, going directly into the factories and identifying the problems that were happening there and pushing for state and then national level legislation. Um, they were wow. creating entire art schools here. They were holding citizenship classes, English language classes, um, you name it. If it was an arts program or a cultural program or some sort of social betterment program, they were trying to create something to address that need or that that gap. That's amazing. It's 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 funny. It's crazy how like she really like took this under her own wing. Yeah. Her the, yeah. the three of them and just said, "Hey, look, let's." We're going to do it that way. Yeah. Would you feel confident saying that this did not exist before her in the, in the U.S.? It, no, this is one of the first. We can't confirm that it was the first yeah. public house in the U.S., um, but it was one of the very first, and it is. it became the blueprint for settlement houses as time went on. And, and it was it the blueprint as, you know, it gave people opportunity, the schools, the arts, the, was that like the blueprint? Nobody was. Yeah, nobody was doing what anything to the extent that they were involved in and a lot of it was because people who came to work here were coming with different skill sets right. and so they had something new to offer and they were like okay well we can do this study or we can do this initiative or we can open this class and they were relying on the expertise of the people who were here but that created an idea that that should be the norm in other spaces as well when we were talking downstairs uh before you were saying how you know the teens and the 20s were kind of like the prime years and like the heyday for this you tell us a little bit about that like um so in the teens the 19 teens that was still mainly a european um community living right. here um and it was all of those programs that i mentioned they were like ongoing yeah. um they were involved with other organizations throughout the city as well um that were doing work with immigrants, that were doing work that was based in uh, public health initiatives. Um, and it was, they, uh, the documents that they have in the records that we have say that they were seeing about 10,000 people a week wow. here, like coming through for classes and for services a week. And they had about a hundred people working and living on site. So it doesn't count volunteers and things like that. Yeah. Um, literally boarders who were working here. Uh, during that period. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like this place was packed big. Yeah. Like, well, it's yeah. Just, but I mean, obviously and right now we're sitting in a single building, but this wasn't just a single building. Exactly right. right. So tell us a little bit about what other buildings were surrounding it. Sure. So this was this was actually a family home originally. Mm -hmm. Um, that was built in the 1850s, and then in 1889, they actually rented out just like part of the first floor and part of the second floor to start their programs in. And then over time, as they started to have more resources and more interest, then they ended up renting out the entire space. And the person who owned the house, one over, eventually like became part of the association, and she just basically gifted the house to them. Um, for the use, they can't accommodate all these people and all this in yeah. one space. So eventually they began expanding and it went from being this one house to being a 13 building complex. Wow. Yeah. Um, the second focus yeah, like, is like a small campus, absolutely. Um, it was set to span about a city block. Wow. wow. It was set to span. That was it. That was wow. Yeah. Wow. They needed more space. Yeah. They, uh, the first building that opened was a public art gallery. It was the first free public art gallery in Chicago. Wow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they ended up creating one of the big programs here was child care services mm -hmm. and a kindergarten. That was the first program that opened, actually. And they ended up uh, building an entire separate building that was just a nursery and daycare and children's clinic and things like that. Jeez. So, yeah, the, it was it was. Yeah, that is 
It's so crazy. We we, we did we've done some research. We talked about Jane Addams several times on the podcast. But like hearing these type of things, this is why we do this. We want to hear from these different accounts. The reason why I bring up the, the teens in the twenties, the, the heyday, is because that's when she also, her and the others, you know, started getting backlash. Right? You know, what I mean? there's a lot of backlash. Yeah. Just so you all know, we are sitting right in front of the FBI files that they had on Jane Addams which is crazy. And so that's kind of where I want to go with this next. Like, tell us about the struggle, you know, being a woman and trying to do, get this whole activation. Sorry. Exactly. Yeah. I always say that Hull House was a very subversive space. Mm-hmm. Um, it was run by women. It was led by women. The programs were being um, coordinated by women. It was mainly funded by women. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just, it did great. It, yeah. It's, 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 it's a wonderful <laughs> thing. <laughs> While we're on yeah. yes. Probably some might say because. Yeah, yeah. And she's, she's, like, she's the blueprint. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and so they uh, were open to communities that were often derided, often looked down on, often alienated. Um, you know, immigrants, especially immigrant groups who were not like the preferred immigrant right. groups. Right. Um, that you could suddenly turn white and get their vote. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> They were an open space for unions that were being formed, mm-hmm. and unions would have their meetings here. Um, um, they were inviting for use of the space people who had um, less beloved political stances and views. So, right. then, you know, socialist groups yeah. to be here, anarchist groups, yeah. uh, communist groups. Um, and so it was a space that was open and welcoming, which made it frightening in some ways. Yeah, everybody's here. Right. <laughs> and large. Yeah. yeah. And it was also a space that was um, supporting people who were considered not worthy of support yeah. in a lot of ways. Um, and so then you have to start World War One. Jane Addams has already been involved in the suffrage movement. She's already been involved in uh, civil rights work. She's already been involved in, um, you know, different pushes for resources. And so she takes this anti-war stance and she is a pacifist. And this is incredibly alarming yeah. for many, many uh, organizations and people in power yeah. or in uh, influential spaces. Yeah. Because she is an influential person. Right. She's affecting the people's opinions yeah. and has power. Yeah. Um, it's so wild to me that being against the war made her right. someone to look out. And now look at us today. You know, like, it's, it's cool to be against the war. You know what I mean? Okay. But at the same time, though, there's still that argument that you're not being patriotic. Right. right? Yep. Yep. And so, like, she, that was something, like, we really, really saw in the 2000s was this this idea that if you aren't supporting every single thing the government does, you're not patriotic. And so there were, sorry, sorry yeah, the, there were groups that were making these accusations that she's un-American, she's right. a dangerous person. And um, and it led to the I mean that and the work she was doing separately, and then her traveling internationally doing this piece work. It's great. It's it leads to the formation of that FBI file. You know, what was she doing internationally? Uh, she was working with peace organizations okay. and like forming. Actually, she was one of the founders of the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. Um, and she, she was a founder. She was one of the founders. Yeah. You know what's so, funny is like I'm I'm still in like this days of like I'm sitting inside of the whole house, Jane. I've been, and like I'm hearing you say these things that are crazy. And that's all like, wait, well, she's the founder. Like these are things that we I didn't know. Like, yeah. Know this stuff. She was involved in the founding of uh, the NAACP. Yeah. She was involved. She was a I want to say the vice president of the NAWSA for quite a while. Uh, so yeah, she was. She had her hands in yeah. everything. Yeah. And she was so connected. Now. Her and uh, Ida B. Wells, they linked up, right? <laughs> Tell us about it. <laughs> so, they worked together. Yeah. Um, they actually did have a relationship. Yeah. Um, they were both involved in that work to found it. The they were the uh, suffrage work here in Chicago. Um, but one of the notable things is this conversation that happened between them about lynching. Mm-hmm. And so Ida B. Wells was a very outspoken anti-lynching activist, uh, which we can do Yeah. And uh, Jane Addams, so Ida B. Wells was, I don't remember who was invited first to wear, but Ida B. Wells spoke at Hull House. And Jane Addams was invited to speak at the church where I, 
was frequented. And she decided to make this uh, talk be about a condemnation of lynching with the caveat that it's because it's too cruel for the crimes that were being right. Like it's too strong of punishment. So the assumption she went in there with was, yes, the things that these men are being accused of are happening. Right. It's just we shouldn't be lynching. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's a little bit dramatic. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. And well, uh, responded to this with a massive uh, body of work that she did um, that literally took and analyzed every single, and I forget what city it was, um, but every case of lynching over a period of years and the so-called crimes and reasons for which they were done and which they were committed. And she um, basically blew Jane Addams's, you know, yeah. flame out of the water yeah. that these men were committing crimes that were leading to this. Right. In actuality, they were Black men yeah. so they were living. Yeah. living yeah. and being right. and persecuted. Um, and so the good thing about Jane Addams was she always was like, Willing to listen. learn, listen, and change her her stance on things, and so she took it in stride. And you know, then after that, um, they continued working together. So that's so dope to hear that yeah. she was she was able to own up. Be like, yeah. you know what? Oh yeah. Hey, all right. <laughs> One of the, my favorite things about Nina is that she wanted to listen to people. Right. She wanted to learn from people, and she wanted to know people's experiences and their their views and things like that. She was like the OG ally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. 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 Um, so we're we're in the whole house, right? You know, like tell us what's in here. What's left of the whole house? Right. You know, what I mean? we know there's 13 buildings, but what's left? So there are only two buildings left today. There's the one that we are currently in, which is the whole home, and then next door we have the residence dining. And so, just like it sounds like, that is where the people who worked on site would have their meals, would have gatherings. Um, there were also neighbor ga neighborhood gatherings that were held there, and it was where uh, a lot of talks took place as well. So I think Wells, that's where she spoke. Um, well, Frank Lloyd Wright, Gertrude Stein, um, uh, Kropotkin, like <laughs> all of these, all of these personalities who were coming through the whole house. That's where they were, you know, having their, you know, their speak, their speeches and stuff. So. And what is it? What is it now? Um, so now it's the it's where we have our offices, <laughs> but it's also um, a space that's used for those same things for gatherings. We have a, we have it as a space that like city organizations and university organizations and groups can hold events or um, you know uh, just gatherings in general. Um, and we work with a lot of community partners and organizations in the city, and we have programs that we host there as well. Awesome. And then we're right now in the museum, right? Uh, and it's it's open. People can come and visit yes. the museum. Can you tell us a little bit, like, where can people find the tickets, uh, the hours, stuff like that? So our, um, it, we are a free museum. Um, we are open Sundays from noon to five, and then Monday through Friday, or sorry, Tuesday through Friday, uh, we're open from nine to five. And then you can go on our website and make your reservations out there. We also have public, free public tours every Friday at 2 p.m. Um, make a reservation for that as well on our website. Um, but we also accept walk-ins, so come see us. <laughs> come hang out. Honestly, you have to come see this. Yeah. Like, this is just it's amazing. literally one of the best experiences. And it's just it's so well-preserved. Right. You know I mean? Yeah, there's been a lot of care. Um, we are part of the University of Illinois at Chicago. Um, and so they are, they, we get that maintenance work right now. And so it's, it's a conservation space. <laughs> <laughs> it's a national historic landmark. So that's yeah. right, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's awesome. You all can check it out. Not yet. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. Both. It was Thank so crazy to have you here. Thank oh, you for the appreciation.
man look that was crazy crazy like i, I i'm speechless man like same honestly y'all you know i learned more about jane adams um y'all need to come down here if it's you, free it's free man like this is chicago history y'all yeah come out here and just check it out be a tourist in your own city or if you out of town you know what i mean just come out here and check it out learn I'm a little bit you are itinerary it's, yes yeah. yes man look they have the keys the original keys yeah. to the whole house is here That's like crazy. that was right unreal unreal but time to eat time to eat time to eat Let's and one of our favorite locations Greek town baby let's get it just had dinner where we had dinner at uh greek islands yeah buddy uh right here in uh greek town, greek town one of our favorite places yeah uh, here in the real. city and uh, let me tell you we are full we are full. we did the uh, dinner for two which you get uh two appetizers a salad um a main course made up of four things mm -hmm. dessert and coffee mm -hmm. Italy style, y'all. <laughs> Italy style, baby. <laughs> These people ain't trying to see me eat. Why? You ain't trying to see me eat and get all crazy with it. Put that potato in your mouth. <laughs> see, when you do it like that. Mm. Garlicky? Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, so we got uh, the moussaka, uh, some meatballs, meatball, chicken, chicken skewer, skewers, and then uh, what was the last um, thing? Oh, lamb. Lamb. And rice and potatoes. That is, for $32 a person, that's a deal. Yeah, that's wild. That's a deal, honestly. A fantastic deal. Yeah. Tastes really good. Amazing. I mean. It was also packed in there. Packed. And it's like the middle of the day. I know we said dinner, but yeah. it was like lunch. But uh, let me tell you, the cheese, the sagan saganaki, that saganaki is good. A little salty to me. Yeah. A little it's, salty. It's just how it's meant to be. But it's good. It is, it's a pimp right here. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, but no, it's fantastic. The food is really good. Um, what else did we have? We had the uh, that was Desserts. the dessert it was fantastic. Baklava, or something else. Yeah. Um, nonetheless, come out here, man. Yeah, you know, it's it's beautiful out here. They got some construction going on. It's packed. The food is good. Yeah. Y'all gonna love that it. Free valet parking. The free valet parking, that, and that's clutch around this part of town. So, um, but yeah, come on out here, support. Check us out, man. Shout out to uh, Nadia at the uh, Hall House for having us there. Such a wonderful time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See you uh, next time.